CataractCoach.com, a primary posterior capsular rexus, removing a central posterior capsule plaque in a 29-year-old patient. So here's the cataract. You can see it's posterior subcapsular with a lot of opacity right there in the absolute middle. Of course, we're showing you the video at, ten, at three times normal speed so we can get through the whole thing. Adjusting the speculum. I like that idea. Get everything set up the way you want it. We have a young resident who's operating this case, and we're going to give this resident some help when it's time to do that uh, posterior capsorexis. So in a young patient like this, of course, the nucleus is very soft. Why do you put tripan blue dye in if you have good red reflex? Well, remember, the other advantage of tripan is it makes the capsule a little bit less elastic. In a 29-year-old like this, that capsule can be very elastic. This patient's a type 1 diabetic, and again, this cataract is developing over the last couple of years, and you can see it's very significant. So the eye goes out of focus because the resident is pushing the globe into the orbit. And so take out those bubbles, getting a nice good capsule rex here. You want to have about a five millimeter rexus here. Again, keeping in mind that the capsule may be more elastic than you think. So this resident likes to start off with a cystotome, which is fine. So getting the cystotome going here and a capsule rex will be done. Now the nucleus is soft enough that it can be removed with just the IA probe. You really don't need to use any ultrasonic energy here. And this is for sure not a posterior polar cataract. We have seen this patient years prior. She's been following up in our resident clinic for years now, and she never had a prior history of posterior polar. Plus, when we look at that type of cataract, it doesn't have that characteristic polar kind of delineation or demarcation line. So I like the nice rex being done there, and that's beautifully centered. It's about five millimeters, maybe a little on the small side, which I'll take. So hydrodissection, again, you want to get this nucleus up out of the bag. This thing is soft. If you can't get up out of the bag completely, you can use the, it looks like a phago probe going in here, but there's nothing to chop. You're just going to literally just aspirate. Aspirate and bring it up. In fact, you don't even need ultrasonic energy, so you could just eliminate that step or don't go into position three. So take down as much of the nucleus as you can, and pretty early on like this, let's switch to the IA probe. We're going to have a lot more control with the IA probe. Now, there's going to be obviously a posterior plaque here. Should we leave it alone? Could you just yag it later? You could. You could do a YAG capsulotomy later for this patient, but do keep in mind that I don't want to create some big, large, opaque floater in this patient's vision. And remember as well, 29-year-old has a vitreous that's thicker. If you've ever seen vitrectomy done on young people, their vitreous is almost solid. It's very thick. Compared to when you do uh, vitrectomy on someone who's much older, 70, 80, 90 years old, it's very liquefied. And so in this case, the anterior hyoid face is going to be nice and firm, and it's going to want to stay together. I think we're going to have an easy time doing our, our posterior capsule rexus while keeping the anterior hyaloid face intact. And we're going to show you that. At the end of this case, we're going to do an OCT image and show you a real-time OCT, and you'll be able to see the anatomy very well. So cleaning up our capsule bag here. Now you see there's that big central plaque. You can sometimes peel off that plaque and try your best and you can go up against it, but you, can, you don't want to have an irregular tear in the posterior capsule. We do want to put a single piece acrylic lens in the capsule bag for this patient, and that's going to be our best option. So again, cleaning it up looks pretty good. Let's go to normal speed now. We've slowed down the video. This is one time speed, so normal speed. Filling the eye with our cohesive viscoelastic. There you go. You can expand the capsule bag there, and you can see there's that plaque area. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a primary posterior capsulotomy or capsulorexis. So going to go in. First thing we got to do is we got to open the capsule bag there. So we'll use the cystotome again. And then once we open it, we want to really put a little a small bolus of viscoelastic to kind of create a barrier there, push back the anterior hyaloid face. So we can go in through the paracentesis here. You can go through the main incision as well. Just be sure to pivot so you don't deflate it. So poking in, and let's try to get a capsule rexus started here. So we can poke into that capsule. That looks pretty good. And we can inject a little more viscoelastic if we need to, or we can just grab these forceps. And so we grab the forceps here, and we can start tearing this rexus here. Get it going. Once we get it going, there we go. Now you can stop and put viscoelastic here. Some of our natural viscoelastic that's already in the eye is going to push back against the hyaloid face. So as we open this up, we're getting our own viscoelastic pushing back. You could add more viscoelastic if you wanted to. In this case, we didn't, really didn't need to. So there you go. There's our posterior capsule tissue, including that plaque, which has been removed nicely. 
now being very careful when we put the lens in. Now think about this. Don't aim the lens towards that central posterior capsular axis. You want to get this lens dialed in just inside the capsular bag. So nice and even, barely sneaking it under the anterior capsular rim, being very gentle, want to minimize manipulation, get this into position, there it is. Now we are happy. You can see there the beautiful posterior capsular axis and there's the anterior capsular axis. Very clean, very easy to see, and no vitreous prolapse at all. So now on our fluidic sightings, we take out the viscoelastic, but let's first seal up the incision a little bit more. And we'll remove the viscoelastic here from the eye. Don't go behind the eye well, of course. So we'll leave that alone and then take out a viscoelastic here. You, to make this a little more stable, you can decrease the aspiration flow rate. Notice how I don't want the eye to collapse. So keeping the eye inflated at all times, don't let the AC collapse. We can use this angle sweep method and inject BSS to make sure there's no more viscoelastic stuck in the angle, which you see there's a little bit coming out right now. There you go, and that can all be flushed out of the eye. And this is gonna be a beautiful outcome for this young patient. And so what do you think, what do you think about refractive goals? What would you choose here? In this case, we chose a refractive goal of about minus one for the patient, which will give her good all around kind of indoors vision. And she doesn't mind wearing glasses to drive. So there's the incision being sealed up. Put a little tetracaine on a wax cell, and then we'll check that. And then let's look at the OCT imaging as well. I think that's gonna tell us a lot. We're fortunate to have this technology on our teaching microscope so we can show you all those little details. Check this out. So there's the OCT, that's the IOL, and look, there's an anterior capsule and a posterior capsule. So here's the imaging from it. A Little bit of viscoelastic there, anterior hyaloid face is intact. You can see that's a really nice position of the IOL. Anterior and posterior capsules are open with the capsular rexes. And here it is on the post-op day one, you can see the anterior and posterior capsular rexes. And let's take another look at that, a little bit more magnification. That looks great, beautifully clear visual axis. And of course, we'll probably tell the most if I show you the red reflex or red image. There you go. Now you can see the two capsular openings and this patient had a really beautiful outcome. So the technique there is a primary posterior capsular rexis and certainly something you can learn to do a lot easier on someone who's young and where the vitreous is a lot more solid, certainly much less likely to prolapse. And just be cautious when doing this. Thanks for watching.